Hi, my name is Mark Jankovic. I am delighted today to be talking to Simone. Hi, Marsh. Good morning, Simone. Thank you for your time. Hi, Mark. Lovely oh. to meet you. Are you well? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Really good. I'm just so pleased I got in so quickly. <laughs> Every one of these I've tried has been such a, um, well, I, I clearly I'm, I'm, I'm too old for Instagram, but I think it's a really cool platform. So, uh, so I'm delighted we managed to do it. I've got millions of questions, uh, as you can imagine, but I don't think we'll get through all of them. But um, quick intro of you. I gave a little bit of an intro before, but I think just to... Uh, to tell everybody, you started commercial in, in 1991 um, after a, an incredible kind of swimming career where you won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, which is uh, no, no mean feat. And you've grown the business from what was a, obviously a startup to a 70 million pound major independent player across the, across the country doing much more than just offer supply. So that's, uh, so that's the, uh, the intro. The reason uh, I'm so keen to talk to you, obviously, is part of what you do is transport. And transport is a massive perpetrator uh, in, in carbon. And I know you guys have been carbon neutral since 2006. So I'm super keen to hear your journey and you know, talk to another entrepreneur uh, and see how we can share, share cool stuff. Oh, I wanted to say, I love your website. It is a brilliant website. It has got so much stuff going on. It is the the vision and mission kind of pours out, which I which I think is awesome. So um, I thought I would, oh, thank I would you so it. much. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I would like to say I did it, but my wonderful marketing team did it. And, well, well, um, yeah. you know, trying to keep up with everything that we do and get that out there and share the story of, of commercial is, is so important and something that we're always working on. No, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. So t tell us a little bit about, about the journey in commercial and, 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 and where you are today and the stuff you're doing. So um, I think, you know, we're here to, to talk about um, our, our sustainability journey. So it's probably best to start with that, which for me happened 15 years ago. And funny enough, I watched your interview with Fiona Ball <laughs> and it was Sky who invited us as, a, as one of their suppliers, chosen suppliers, to see Al Gore when he presented the Inconvenient Truth. Yeah. And that's what everybody's talking about right now is this tipping point, um, is the, the temperature of the earth rising 1.5 or, or 2 degrees. And, you know, we have to do everything in business to change the way that we work and limit our, our negative impact. And it was like one of those epiphany moments for me in business. I love my company. I, it, it's very close behind my daughter. And so I want to do everything to enrich the, the company. And I kind of walked away with this feeling of, of an obligation that we should be doing something around um, climate change and limiting our negative impact. And um, also really excited because with every challenge, there's, a, there's an opportunity. And we were pretty brave at the time. So at the time we measured our carbon footprint, we just copied what Sky did. We, we looked at offsetting, but most importantly, we set a plan to reduce our emissions, our carbon emissions by 75% in three years. And it took us four years and it was quite a journey. And a lot of it revolved around fuel because 80% of our emissions were around shipping goods around the country and salespeople all going around in cars. And kind of, you know, we have never stopped. It's, it's, I have to say, I say in business, you get thrown a ball, you know, a challenge and you choose to accept that ball and you run with it and it changes the shape of your company forever or you choose not to and you don't evolve and you don't grow and if we're not learning and growing we're, we're you know we're, we're not evolving as a company and, and commercial by nature our mantra is all about constantly believing our better selves around the corner and and shooting for that at all times so um it's it's been the most enriching thing that i have done in 30 years of business it's it's never it's just gained traction all this time and now all the big corporates are talking about it 15 years ago <laughs> only a few were you know um Lonely so it's it's 
it's wonderful absolutely a, a, a journey which if people uh, just about every business is doing something but the more you do it's almost like you you key into this um turbo energy because people are driven by something that drives them emotionally not just about building the profit of a company but my belief has been that that we have built into a really successful company and this has been the biggest catalyst that we've had in making that happen. Wow. Wow. I mean, there's, there's lots that's come out of that. I mean, one of them is, is customers and the other one is, is, um, is, is employees and staff. And one of the questions I want to ask was, do you think with the, the vision and mission that you've set, you are managing to get more interesting, let's start with staff, more interesting staff. Do you think the staff are engaged? Do they totally get behind it? They believe it? They, 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 they feel it as much as you do? With, with, without any shadow of a doubt, and I think that's, that happened 15 years ago, is we started to attract people who really wanted to make a difference within their company, within their communities, and within the, the industry. And by doing that, I think you attract the best talent. I, you know, two, two years ago, just before when we were able to travel a lot, I was presenting in Chicago and there was a fantastic presentation that was done by a millennial and she'd won um, a, a competition in the States. And she basically said that there were three things that millennials just wouldn't have in a company. One, they wouldn't work from nine to five. They didn't understand it. Two, they wouldn't be held back by technology. You know, the software system, you can't do that because they're used to swiping changing you know they've been brought up with it but three most importantly they wouldn't work for a company that wasn't purpose-driven and that's become more and more to the forefront and I think what we've all been through people are, are gonna think very very carefully about where they go and work Do, does it suit them does it suit their morals does it suit their their vision and are they able to give back and I think you know we've had lots of ways of people being able to get involved in our program to reduce our negative impact and and improve our positive impact and that ignites that turbo energy and they they don't just get involved in the transformational things that they can do to make us a more sustainable company they take that back into their roles and they're inspired to go and do that in their everyday lives um so it it, it gets that talent to come into the business and I think it keeps that talent motivated and inspired to, to stay. I mean, that, it, it, it feels like we, you, you said tipping point. It, it, it feels like that. And, and, you know, getting people who kind of feel it and believe it, and then they can take it into their own lives, which is, which is super vital. And then they can bring it actually bring back stuff that they're learning elsewhere. Um, purpose is key, which is, I've written, I've written down here, which is, okay. which is great. 15 years ago was a lonely place. Um, <laughs> it was certainly a very lonely place for me 15 years ago. I was like tumbleweed when I was talking about sustainability. Nobody <laughs> wanted to listen. Um, are you, do you think we've gone past the tipping point? Are, do you think that your clients and or you're picking up interesting new clients because they believe in your vision, your mission, and, um, and want to be part of the journey? I think that happened 15 years ago. You just had to hunt it out a little bit further. Um, but definitely I used to stalk people like Jonathan Porritt and, you know, I'd look <laughs> online over who there is because I knew nothing about sustainability. You know, I'm, I was looking at the bottom of a pool for the last 11 years. So I didn't pay a lot of attention in school. Um, and I used to, to, you know, go to lots of events and hear them speak because it's just about inspirational stories. And that's where I remain quite committed to inspiring lots of different businesses to, to keep going. And um, yeah, I, I remember I went to an event just before lockdown and Jonathan Porritt was speaking at that event. And he basically said, there's been a seismic shift in this is now at boardroom tables. And I spoke a little bit earlier about when I was in Chicago and I was writing our plan to go to a hundred million. And for me, it's always important to think about how we articulate that to the client, the vision, not the what, but the why. And um, I got off the plane and there was a, a top retailer who had asked to speak to me. And I was, it was my sales director who, who said, look, we've got this top really retailer they want to talk to you. And I said, okay, brilliant. Um, love to speak to them. Why do they want to speak to me? 
and he said he'd lost his two last hires, senior, senior hires, because they went to a business that was more purposeful. <laughs> and so it's kind of going from the top to people who aren't in the business. It, it's coming from every angle, which is, is exciting. And now, you know, the, the technology is there. Back in 15 years ago, we were testing, you know, biodiesel and we had all sorts of calamities where the business still has to run, but we had to drain our biodiesel tank that we've built. We had, you know, we're testing hydrogen. So we were part of government funded projects testing that where vehicles would break down in the, in the fast lane of the M4. You know, now the technology is there and, and it, it's, it's, it's much easier to go out there and be able to find what you need and go on and much more, you know, put a really clear plan together and an investment plan together. And you will get that return on your investment. Is it, That's what I found. Interesting, because because part of this whole series is that, as you know, when I when I kind of started this journey, changing changing um, changing chapters, it was really hard to find anybody that was like minded. Um, and you know, the part of the series is, you know, who are the like minded people? Where can you know, how can we inspire the next generation of eco disruptors? You know, where are there? I was dreaming about this the other day. Going, there needs to be a database. Are there um, places that you think people can go to that can help? I mean, I, I, how you reached out to the government to get them to help you with hydrogen or you put yourself out there to help with hydrogen innovation, that, that sounds incredible and super hard to, to achieve. How did you do that? Um, really by having a passionate team around me and by giving them the, the space and time and empowering them to go and have conversations and then being very, very open-minded. I mean, I would say we need great leaders in this field and those great leaders are right across my business and they'll be right across everybody else's business. And, you know, we, we have a program which is called Change Champions. And so being sustainable isn't owned just by you know, three people who get exhausted by it. We've got some real, um, you know, technical people who have real knowledge in that field, but going out and getting that, that buy-in from, from your community or from your company is a job that we kind of change every three months. And they come up with a transformational project. They look at what we're doing. They look at, you know, our 10 commitments as a company and they choose something that they feel they can transform our business for the better. And they're given the time to go out and investigate. And then they're given an audience by the board to be able to show what they feel we could do better and then ask for that investment. And then we give them a budget to then explain to the whole business what they've done. And again, it just generates that energy and that enthusiasm that feeds more and more. And every team gets better and better and better because they're slightly competitive. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like me. <laughs> Every three months? I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, so we have a different team and they, they set their goals. So the last team um, uh, bought, uh, put together a, 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 a booklet for our staff at home to be able to, to become carbon net zero at home. So we're really trying to focus on that scope three, which is exciting. Um, and um, being able to offset at home. So the company has supported half, I think it's two pounds something, I can't remember the exact amount, and the company does the other half to help people go carbon neutral at home, but also at the same time giving them all those ideas to be able to reduce their impact and change the way they do things at home. Um, so it's not just confined to what's going on in the business, it can be our, our scope three. And then they finish the project, so it's got real traction, it runs through, and then another team takes over and it's become a leadership. It used to be called Green Angels and then one of the teams rebranded it because it's a change champions program and it's like a, it's the best form of training I think that, that we have. I mean, it totally gets everybody on board and it, it ingrains into them, A, they need to be thinking and constantly moving and changing and it's not, as you said, change equals growth and evolution. So, you know, how, you, that's just an amazing takeaway. So every business should have a team of change champions that rotates every three months, uh, that presents the board and yeah. they take ownership of... Uh... We, we, we've actually 
um, rolled that out to uh, customers and schools as well. So there's some great videos that people could ha have a search on or they can contact us. And we've got it night. We've been doing it for, I think we started doing it in for 2009. So we've refined it. And that's why it can, you know, a project, if you want a project to go really well and to be really satisfying, it needs to move at a pace. Yeah. And so we've kind of worked out what roles people should have and how it should work. And it, it's, it's as much as a collaboration training leadership piece of work as it is about making your company more sustainable and getting that buy-in uh, across the company. Wow. I'd love to learn more. I mean, I went and I, I saw that you had changed champion on the website. I didn't see any videos. But I'll certainly look that up because I think that's, that's incredibly inspiring. If we can, if we can get all businesses to to give, you know, there, there is, as you say, there's leadership and intelligence across all businesses and in all levels. Yes. And letting, letting that come through. Um, you know, one of the challenges I think for every single business, and I, I always look at SMEs, that's where the disruption happens. That's where the creative thinking happens. And it's yes. those people who are the most underfunded. And it's, if you can fund that spark of creation and, and inspiration, yeah, that's where it'll it'll really take off. So yeah, and I think it's it's all about energy because there's certain things like we built a, a bike shed. One of the Change Champions teams built a bike shed which was solar charged, um, and it would have cost a lot more had we have had somebody and employed somebody to do that. But they really, you know, they took the time, and there was actually a, a client had done this, and they spoke to him and you know they just were far more innovative uh, about the project and it was it was a one-off and they wanted to do a really good job knowing that they're three months and as a result of that I think there's about 160 people in our company who've been involved in this program <laughs> that's amazing and there's ownership right so they can they can put their name on something and say yeah. that, that bike that bike shed was mine yeah um, and they have that feel good factor. And I've been marched around the building and told what I need to do, which is great. <laughs> you know, it makes, it makes people fearless to have, have a voice. Yeah, they're, they're reporting to the board. So, you know, they've, you know, they've, got, to, they've got to get everybody involved. That's superb. Um, one thing that I, I'm massively passionate about is, is social enterprises. And I've got issues with the government, why they don't support them more. But, but tell us about your social enterprise and how how you've kind of integrating commercial with your, your social enterprise? So we started it in 2016 and um, we produce a lot of digital print, wide format print, mugs, and, and also as we've moved on to the retail sector, we do a lot of fulfillment. And so there's a natural requirement for those products. And what we want to do is be able to say to our clients, you know, here you can get social value by buying your products through a social enterprise. Okay. It's, it's run as a business, completely yeah. as a business, but running alongside is a, a volunteer program of young people, primarily ages 16 to 24, who for whatever reasons have fallen upon hard times. So it could be family breakdown, it could be addiction in family or themselves. It could be they've become homeless. It could be that they're on some on the spectrum and finding school really hard. And we have two job coaches who support them through what's called the No Limits program, which is an eight week program. And it's a combination of working within the business, gaining skills within the business, building a CV, getting support to go on to interviews. We do mock interviews with clients. So they actually get on a bus, they go to the interview, they work with people here. Um, and they're just gaining skills. And it's unbelievable the difference you can make in that amount of time um, in terms of a, a lot of these young people have become isolated in their bedrooms, gaming, um, you know, and just to be able to integrate into a business, build their confidence, build their skills, and then be able to ask those questions that we get asked in interviews and have actual experience. Well, I was a team leader this week and um, you know, we, we had to get this urgent order out and this is what we did and understanding that that's a real skill. Um, it's, it's hugely fulfilling. We take clients around so I can literally see it if I look out of my window here. And, um, you know, it, it, 
draws clients to um, commercial group and commercial foundation and show, so should it because the business is there purely to help young people and to help them move on with their lives and move into work or further training. Um, and so we've had, um, I think it's almost 100 young people through the programme and 80, over 80% 80 move on to jobs or further education. And there's some quite complex cases. And also we have our Partner Plus programme for those who need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support. Um, and, and we're building that all the time. It's a great business. It, it's super inspirational. I mean, I, 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 I think I asked, I asked a high-level government minister once and I said, why does the government not allow businesses to have social enterprises embedded within their umbrella of businesses? And, and fund those social enterprises because they're not for profit. They give everything back. Yes. It's a no-brainer to me. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of skepticism actually when I started that it, I was trying to do it for my, you know, for profit for the company. It was it was never about that. You get to a certain stage and you go, God, I I really, we really need to give back. And again, that that charges that turbo emotional energy in the company where people you know feel really loyal to our brand and to the company and you know we all are able to walk across the road and, and talk to the young people and get involved and mentor and all those sorts of things um you know again it just makes the company richer but but not financially richer but ultimately that feeds into the company growing in a really healthy nourishing way yeah that's amazing need to think about how to frame richer makes you richer but not richer <laughs> but, not, <laughs> but 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 for richer with for fulfillment rich, rich in richer. yeah i mean i guess um fulfillment well i think the yeah. whole the whole planet the whole world needs to frame richer yeah that's very true we do. so there's we do. a question <laughs> there's, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 on, on my series, I'm, I'm, I'm quite keen to chat to, to Mark Carney because I've got a lot of questions for him. Yeah. A lot of questions for him. We're running out of time, loads of things. So um, you talked about retail and this retail person. What do you, do you think with Amazon, with, with your, your um, now direct link with customers, do you think retail is changing as we know, the kind of bricks and mortar? Do you think the direct to consumer relationships going to get get bigger um how do you see that playing out i think undoubtedly we all we all know that retail is is changing and it's very much part of our you know our proposal to our customers is how do we um bring the technology that people are able to have online and you know improve that experience in the store as a, a result of that you know how do we you know, su support people because people still want to go out and touch and feel and and the experience of going out and, you know, really looking for something and, and finding something you really like. That's, that's, a, that's a, a lovely, you know, journey in itself, isn't it? Um, I think there's going to be lots more artisans as well. There's going to be lots more on the high street about, um, you know, lifestyle, relaxation, having a lot of fun and then maybe the bigger stores will have much smaller stores with more smart technology in their stores that allows you to do what you do online but do that within a, a it, within a store i.e you know what goes with what you know um what do other people buy etc and have all of that technology you know on the mirror in the dressing room and then be able to go and pick up be able to try something in one color and then go and pick up the right color um so i think yeah it's it's evolving like everything and it it, it needs to evolve yeah i mean I was, I was lucky enough to go on a trade mission to shanghai and I, a lot of the stores on the high street didn't hold stock yes. you went there you, you looked at what you wanted and then you ordered it on your phone and it got delivered yeah was, this was in 2013 <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool. There's some big um, brands that are doing that in the UK now, quite often where you'll get taken to, you know, screen or they've got a screen on them and you can order it and it will go to your home, etc. Um, 
and I think you can make more informed choices. Yeah, I think tech tech is tech is 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 coming, and I think where you, know, you guys are as the kind of the interface between the consumer and their home, pretty much. Yeah, um, I think stores will become an experience. So you know there'll be lots surrounding. So a lot of our major retailers that that we deal with now are, you know, it's about the experience that they create, and there's collaborations there. So you can stop and have a coffee, and you can do all of those things, and then go and, you know, make the right choices, and then have those products delivered to your home. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so magic wand if you had a magic wand in you know, in what is you know, a really you know, it, your industry is changing i mean it's, it's going up every day but it's uh it's becoming a much more vital cog what would you if you had a magic wand what would you do and and um what can others potentially think about i think um that we learned some huge lessons last year around um you know the ability to use technology the ability to use these sorts of platforms it doesn't stop having that face to face but you know we reduced our emissions by 66 percent last year and we you know the business grew last year so you know there's a huge amount of lessons that we can take which we are and we're helping many of our, our customers to to do the same to ensure that that you know where we we continue that that track down that we don't just come out and do exactly as we were doing before and i think you know most of our customers are, are doing that and we certainly are um and then just you know people you know the, this is this is one planet and this really is the decisive decade and companies realizing, I hope that, you know, I speak at quite a few events that I inspire companies that, that this will make you much stronger as an organization, much more connected as an organization, as we talked about bringing that talent into your organization, you know, not to be afraid and to have it at, you know, equally your sustainability goals of equal importance of as your financial goals because what they will build is social capital so the energy within your company and the drive within your company um, and the motivation of the people within your company and that is as valuable to an organization as cash flow is and as important yeah monetizing social capital i totally agree i mean it's a it's something that we as you, redefining richer that's going to be the that's going to be the, the takeaway <laughs> redefining take richer today. and uh, and and how do we build in better social capital how do we do stuff like that right quick fire um favorite sustainability brands okay so i i have it somewhere here i'm sure i do uh who, who gives a crap <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah great um i literally have a box and anybody who's leaving i give them that to take away we're building our products with purpose brands so we have a great brand called cool earth yeah. and they do cool earth coffee you know talk, think about those brands and we're working with our clients that those conversation points around the office where, where people gather together around your coffee. Cool Earth is, is a fantastic brand that really looks at that really important part of the rainforest that we're trying to protect and the indigenous tribes. And it um, supports the indigenous tribes to grow things like coffee that stop them selling to those who are just going to fell, fell you know the the rainforest down and they're amazing amazing stories um yeah um another one is pva which is a cleaning products which are powder format PVA. so you get rid of pva pva you get rid of all plastics um it's in a powder format so you've it's much uh less expensive to ship around its cost in use tends to be 10 percent less there's two types in your pouring the powder into a receptacle and then adding water so it's much better from the environment 
that there isn't a downside to it at all. And the more we can find, and we call them products with purpose. So we've got 2000 products in that range now. Um, you know, that's what we should be having within our offices and that's what we should be having within our homes. Yeah, totally, 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 totally agree. And that, that is brilliant. And your, your products with purpose, I, I didn't mention them before, but I think that's amazing what, what you're doing there. And then lastly, books, uh, podcasts, things that, that, that others can kind of listen to and learn from. Okay. Um, have you seen Biggest Little Farm? <laughs> oh my God, you have to watch it. It's, it's absolutely the best thing I've watched. It's a, it's a documentary, a true story of a couple who, who um, grow a farm and it's completely, it, all the trials and tribulations for a biodiverse plant a farm. It's amazing. Is it, it's is beautiful, it beautiful, uplifting. You know, there's a huge amount on there that's quite terrifying. And, um, you know, this is one of those ones that's really positive and shows what can be done. So it's on, 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 on BBC or Netflix? I think, it's on, I think it's on Amazon. It was Amazon. on Netflix, but I think it's on Amazon now. I'll look it up. Um, uh, one that I've got my whole leadership team reading at the moment is No, no Bullshit Leadership with Chris Hurst. And this is, I don't feel sustainability should be any different to anything else. It's about setting a very brave goal and doing everything that we can to, to get to that goal. And um, I, love that book um and then the podcast probably would be the climate change podcast by bbc world i don't know whether you've watched that mm. great discussions on there you know they choose a topic and kind of unpick that topic those are all genius i haven't, I haven't heard of any of those <laughs> i want i want to know what you think of biggest little farm when you watch it well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out where it is and I'm going to watch it this evening. That's I, anybody I've recommended it to, man, woman, child, has absolutely loved it. Uh, I, th I, th I think we really, you know, we really do need to rethink yeah, supply is everything, right? And we, we, we're just over-consuming way too much. And how do we reduce that? And how do we... This is, the, there's a, there's this a question. Like a couple who had a dream. They're no different than you and I and what they were able to achieve, and they show all the trials and tribulations and everything, um, is absolutely incredible and a lesson to us all. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So I mean, that has been fascinating. Um, I have absolutely loved it. There's been so much vision and mission coming out, questions, redefining richer, um, you know, what is social capital? How do we, how do we kind of put a value around that? Um, Sustainability equals financial you know, growth. You know, stronger organisations um, attract better talent. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Thank you so so much for your time. And it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, hopefully we we meet in person one day. That would be lovely. I'd love that. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Bye. Bye, Bye Mark. Bye.